Hello class, so this is lesson 2, statistical applications of the course ETME 3120, Maintenance of Mechatronic Systems. So this uh, lesson is in reference to chapter 2 in the textbook. So uh, let's start with defining reliability. Uh, the definition given in the book for reliability is the ability of a system to perform its intended function during its expected life period. Or it is the probability that the system will perform its specified function under the specified conditions throughout its specified life expectancy. So it's a probability. Okay. Now it is important to understand the statistical reliability of the system design in order to plan for an adequate program, as we were going to see uh, later. There are some uh, formulas that we're going to find to uh, calculate, for example, uh, the the pre the preventive maintenance intervals. Okay based on uh, uh, the reliability. Most operation uh, equipment or facilities are treated as a system rather than an individual component. Uh, this is actually important, we're going to see it uh, actually right now, how you're going to treat uh, a system as a whole, the components in a system. Uh, this, is, this is going to be done by uh, uh, taking uh, the components in series or in parallel. Okay, so when we take, when we combine the system uh, component in series, then the reliability is going to be, uh, so if you have A, B, C, for example, series, the reliability is going to be the multiplication of the each component's reliability. Okay, now uh, the word, now since it's probability, okay, since it's probability, uh, reliability is going to be a number between 0 and 1. Okay, 0 corresponds to 0% probability, 1 corresponds to 100% uh, uh, probability. Okay. So it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. So uh, if you have, for example, A at, let's say, 0 0.9 and uh, B at 0 0.85, for example, and C at 0 0.95, then the overall reliability is going to be, or the, the, for the series system, is going to be RA, which is 0 0.9, multiplied by 0 0.85, multiplied by 0 0.95. Okay? And you keep multiplying as you add uh, components in series. For parallel components, when you have components in parallel, uh, the reliability is going to be expressed as 1 minus, in brackets, then each component is going to be 1 minus r of that component, okay? Multi uh, and then we multiply them. So we're going to have 1 minus, in brackets, then open parentheses 1 minus r1, multiplied by 1 minus r2, multiplied by 1 minus r3, and so on, okay? Now let's uh, look at something very important. The overall reliability for a series system is always going to be lower than the lowest reliability in the series components okay so for example a b c they are in series over here if for example a has 0 0.90 and b has 0 0.85 and c has 0 0.95 then the uh, reliability the overall reliability is going to be for sure lower than 0 0.85 okay now, for parallel components, if you have A and B and C in, in parallel, the reliability is always going to be higher than the highest reliability in the system. Okay, so here, if you have A 0.90, B 0.85, C 0.95, then the highest of them is 0.95. So that means the overall reliability for sure is going to be higher than 0.95. Okay, if you get any number lower than that, that means you did something wrong in your calculation. All right. Let's take this example here. Find the system reliability. <clears throat> so uh, as you see here, we have uh, a total of uh, um, six components. First, let's uh, divide it into sections. So uh, here we have these two components are in parallel 0 0.9 and 0 0.7. Okay. Now uh, they are in parallel, so you apply the formula. 1 minus, open parentheses, 1 minus 0 0.9 multiplied by uh, open parentheses, uh, 1 minus 0 0.7, okay? And that's going to give you 0 0.97. So as you see, the parallel reliability is going to be higher than the highest one over here, okay, which is 0 0.9, so you're going to have 0 0.97. Now here we have three components in parallel. You can tell right away it has to be high, the total has to be higher than 0 0.90, okay? And if you apply the formula, 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.9, 1 minus 0 0.8, 1 minus 0 0.75, 
we're going to get 0 0.9955, okay? Uh, the third component is uh, 0.9. Now we have three components in series. We have 0.97, okay? And we have 0.9955, and we have 0.9 are in series. Now, if you multiply them, you're going to get 0.87, which is lower than the lowest component here. So, uh, as we uh, uh, as we saw before. All right. This exercise here, so uh, um, uh, this uh, class exercise, we have here components as you see. This here, 0.99, is in series with these two which are in parallel, so 0.91 and 0.95. You gotta find the parallel equivalent for these two. Then we have here three components in parallel, so you're going to have the, uh, to find the parallel equivalent for these three. And it's going to be in series with 0.92. And then we have over here two components in series. Then we have two components in parallel here. You find the equivalent. Two components in parallel, you find the equivalent. Then you put them in series with, the, with, the, with this one here. And finally, you have this and this and this are going to be in, in parallel, you find the equivalent for them, and then you add everything, you multiply each, uh, everyone uh, in series. So if you have any questions, just let me know, please. Reliability as a function of a number of components. This is a very good graph. Now, uh, let's look at the series reliability. Okay, we have a system in, uh, of uh, series components. So uh, let's start, for example, with n equals to 2. If we have two components only, okay, I can see where's the okay here. So if we have two components only over here, that corresponds to the red. Okay, if we have two components, and each one of these two components has, for example, let's say, a reliability of ninety-five percent. Okay, each component has a reliability of ninety-five percent. Then the overall reliability is going to be 0.9. Okay. Let's go to, for example, here, n equals to 200. 200 components in series. Okay, Each one of these 200, each one of them has a reliability of, let's say, for example, 97%. Okay, 97% in series, 200 components. The overall reliability is going to be almost zero. Okay, as you see here, it's going to be almost zero. Okay. In other words, if there's a production line that has 200 components, each has a reliability of 97%, the production line will never be running. Okay, There's always going to be a stoppage. It's always going to be stopping. So that's why that's what it says over here. Now let's look at series components. Series components, if, uh, I'm sorry, let's look at parallel. In parallel components, if you have, for example, 20 components, 20 components in parallel okay each has a reliability of let's say 70 percent okay each has a reliability of 70 percent then uh, so uh, 20 components that's this color over here as you see it's almost 100 percent okay it's going to be 99 point something so it's going to be particularly it's going to be uh, so as you see here uh, so it's going to be very high reliability so this is a very good graph it tells us the difference between having components in series and in parallel okay of course having components in parallel is going to be very expensive because that means you're going to have you need to have like for example uh, four uh, milling machines you know uh, in in uh, parallel okay so uh <coughs> For the, for the parallel configuration, the overall reliability of the system is greater than the reliability of each individual component. Okay, For series configuration, the reliability, the overall reliability is going to be smaller than the smallest, uh, than the reliability of each individual component. So it's going to be smaller than the smallest. Okay. Failure and failure rate. Failure is the absence of reliability. Failure rate is the ratio of the number of failures to the total number of item hours tested. Okay. Now, assuming that the reliability does not change with time, then 
the reliability is equal to 1 minus lambda. Okay, uh, this is important, so, uh, and I'm going to keep repeating it. Only if reliability doesn't change with time, then r is equal to 1 minus lambda. Okay, now, uh, because the book does not stress on it, so it may, may be confusing for you. So, uh, lambda, again, is the failure rate. This is going to be equal to the number of failures divided by the number of item hours uh, tested. Let's take this example here, example 2. So, if we have 10 instruments that are tested for a period of 100 hours, okay, if 4 units failed after 23 and 42 and 59 and 82 hours respectively, what is the failure rate of the instrument? And what is going to be the instrument's reliability, assuming, again, that it doesn't change with time? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> lambda, the failure rate, is going to be equal to 4. We have 4 instruments failed. And uh, the total number of hours, item hours tested, is going to be 23 for the first one, 42 for the second one, 59 for the third one, 82 for the fourth one. And the, re the remaining 6 each completed 100 hours. Okay, so you add all these hours together. And you will get 4 divided by uh, uh, the number here, and you get uh, 0 0.005, which is 0.5%. Now the reliability is going to be 1 minus lambda, which is equal to 99.5%. Again, that's assuming that reliability does not change with time. Okay, now uh, let's look at the um, mean time between failure and mean time to failure. Very important quantity. Mean time between failures, MTBF, is the expected average time or the frequency. Okay, it can be the average time or the frequency by which we can expect the equipment to fail. Like it can be, like for example, it can be for instance, uh, uh, for example, uh, um, eleven failures per year. Okay, or it can be uh, one failure every. 76 hours okay and so on so uh, so mtbf is estimated based on historical data and statistical analysis this is very important so mtbf you, there's the only way to get it is by having history like five years you know of operation you can tell that every certain number of hours this equipment fails okay mean time to failure is uh, different mean time to failure means uh, the time it takes for the equipment to die. Okay, so mean time to failure, failure refers to units or components uh, that are disposed of upon failure. Therefore, MTTF can be simply equated to the life expectancy of the unit, while MTBF refers to the situation when failure is, is temporary and the unit can be repaired and brought back to online by fixing or replacing the specific components. Mean downtime, so mean downtime, or the mean time to repair, is the average total amount of time that it takes to return a failed equipment back online and ready for operation. Okay, it's uh, actually it's measured from the time a work order is issued until the machine is back uh, uh, online. Okay, this is the mean time, mean downtime, or mean mean time to uh, to repair. So, uh, some important formulas, the mean time between failures in hours is going to be 1 divided by lambda, okay? 1 divided by the failure rate. Now, again, remember that the reliability is equal to 1 minus lambda only if the reliability stays constant with time, because we're going to see in a minute that reliability actually changes with time. It actually decreases with time exponentially. So, uh, availability, the third thing that is important is availability, which is equal to uh, uh, the ratio of uh, the time that the unit stays operational to the total time. Okay, so it's, in other words, going to be mean time between failures divided by the mean time between failures plus the mean downtime. So, uh, again, availability is the proportion of time that the equipment is expected to be operational. And uh, we have seen these. Uh, okay. Example three. Five robot units were produced by a team of students and were tested for a period of... Uh, for, so, actually, I was thinking of this over here. <coughs> this uh, mobile robot unit that was produced by students for their capstone project. 
So, uh, um, five robot units, let's assume, were produced by a team of students and were tested for a period of 40 hours. If four of the units failed after 10 and 22 and 24 and 31 hours, respectively, so in other words, only one robot unit completed the 40 hours, but the remaining four actually failed at 10, 22, 24, and 31. Calculate the robot's failure rate. The reliability, again, assuming that the reliability stays constant with time. The mean time between failure and availability if it takes five hour, uh, work hours to fix a robot unit. In other words, the mean downtime is five hours. Okay, So failure rate is going to be equal to four, because we had four units failed, divided by 10 hours for the first one, 22 for the second one, 24, 31, and 40. And that will give you 0 0.0315. So reliability is going to be equal to 1 minus lambda is going to be equal to 96.85%. Again, assuming that it does not change with time. Okay? It does not change with time. Mean time between failure is going to be 1 over lambda, which is going to be 1 over 0 0.0315. That's going to be 31.75 hours. Availability is going to be equal to MTBF over MTBF plus MDT, so it's going to be 31.75 divided by 36.75, and that's going to give you 86.4%. Life cycle failure rate. So, uh, <coughs> failure occurs at different rates during the life of the product, and follows different statistical and probability distributions. Here, we're going to assume always we're going to follow uh, in, uh, an exponential uh, probability distribution. Uh, typically, the failure rate as a function of the equipment's lifetime follows the bathtub curve, a very, very popular and very important curve. It's called the bathtub curve, okay? The bathtub curve over here. So, uh, <clears throat> this, as you see here, I don't know why this disappears, okay. So, uh, here we have, as you see, it follows this curve like this it can be divided into three uh, stages okay three stages stage one is the infant mortality stage or the debugging stage okay here failures are high and mostly due to defects design or installation errors so as you see here it's mainly really due to defects and installation okay uh, you uh, install it improperly or there's a defect in the in the in the equipment uh, the stage of interest is the second stage, really. The second stage is where uh, uh, it's random. The failure is random. Okay. Stage three uh, really is the rare at first. This is when it retires. The equipment is, re is retiring and should be phased out. Stage three. So uh, now something that's important to remember is that the, the bathtub curve uh, typically is going to be really for mechanical equi equipment generally. Uh, a little, uh, somehow for electrical components also, uh, but not for programs, for example. Software, uh, the software, there's going to be a lot of initial uh, bu uh, bugs, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the software. But then, uh, once you get rid of the bugs, as time passes, it becomes better. Okay, it doesn't, of course, there's no going to be, it's, it will not retire unless uh, there's an update. Okay. Reliability as a function of time. So uh, I told you before that reliability, assuming it does not change with time, is equal to 1 minus lambda. Okay? However, this is not going to be the case you, uh, uh, in reality. Okay? So uh, practically, it's going to change with time. It's always going to decrease with time. Okay? So the failure rate is constant. Now, uh, remember something. The failure rate lambda is constant. Okay? But the reliability is not. The reliability decreases with time. Okay, so the failure rate is constant, so it doesn't change with time. Reliability always decreases exponentially with time, assuming exponential distribution. The risk of failure is the probability of a failure occurrence. It complements reliability. Okay, in other words, complements means one minus reliability. Okay, so in other words, so here, so reliability as a function of time are of t is equal to e to the power minus lambda of t e is Euler's number the natural number okay e to the power minus lambda multiplied by t which is equal to 1 minus the failure rate 
okay? 1 minus the failure, I'm sorry, the failure probability, okay? So R of t is equal to e to the power minus lambda of t equals to 1 minus the uh, uh, probability of failure. So well, let's take this example here. What is the reliability of, of the pro uh, robotic units in example 3 at the following time intervals? At t equals to 1 hour, and at t equals to mean time between failures. So again, you need to apply this formula here. So R of t is equal to e to the power minus lambda t. So uh, that means here we have uh, R of 1 is equal to e to the power minus lambda. If you remember from the previous example, we saw that lambda is equal to 0 0.0315. Okay, 0 0.0315. And we saw that the mean time between failure was 31.75 hours. Okay, so lambda, we take it, put it here. And e to the power minus 0 0.0315 multiplied by 1 hour, that's going to be 0 0.9689. So in other words, it's going to be equal to 96.89%, which is equal to 1 minus lambda. Okay, so if you remember here, 1 minus lambda was this number over here. So that means this here at the f initially is going to be equal to 1 minus lambda then it's going to be decreasing with time, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> the mean time, so at uh, uh, the mean time between failure, which is 31.75 hours, the reliability is equal to uh, e to the power minus 0 0.0315 times 31.75, and that's going to give you 36.78%. So the reliability at the mean time between failure is going to be 36.78%. Okay, which means that the probability that something will fail, a failure will take place, is 63.22% at the mean time between failure. Okay. Example 5. Let's take another example. Seven units of equipment have been tested for 100 hours. Okay. Four units failed after. 30, 34, 55, and 67 hours. If the average down time is 40 hours, calculate the failure rate, the mean time between failures, availability of the equipment, reliability at the first hour of operation, reliability at time equals to half of the MTBF. So, uh, of course, the first thing you need to find is the lambda. Okay? Lambda, the failure rate, is going to be equal to 4, 4 divided by uh, 30 plus 34 plus 55 plus 67 plus 300 which is because you have three remaining points at 100 and that's going to give you 0 0.0082 the mean time between failures is 1 divided by lambda which is going to be 1 divided by 0 0.0082 and that's going to be 121.5 hours availability is going to be equal to the mean time between failures divided by in parentheses mean time between failure plus the mean downtime that's going to be 0.752. So in other words, 75.2 percent of the time. Now, uh, reliability at the first hour of operation, R, R of one, is going to be equal to e to the power minus lambda, uh, e to the power uh, minus lambda multiplied by t. So it's, it's going to be e to the power minus 0 0.0082 times one. That's going to be 0.9918. The reliability at half of MTBF, that is at 60.75 hours, is going to be equal to, as you see here, 0 0.0082 in the negative uh, times 60.75, and that's going to be uh, 0.6077. So in other words, 60.77%. So here, as you saw, the, the reliability started at 99.18%, then 60 hours later, it dropped to or uh, um, um, it dropped to 60.77 percent. Okay. So <clears throat> a question: What is the reliability at t equals to uh, 121.5 hours? Now, this time here, 121.5 is the mean time between failures. Okay. This is the mean time between failures, all right? As we saw, as we found over here, 
And we saw from the previous example that the reliability at mean time between failures is going to be always 36.78%. Okay, you can verify that. Just take R of 121.5, and we're going to find that's going to be equal to 0 0.3678. Okay. Um, let's take this example here. In example 5. What should be the preventive maintenance interval if the failure probability sh uh, should be no more than uh, 25%? So RT is equal to 1 minus failure probability. That's going to be 1 minus 0.25, which is equal to 0.75. So in other words, so since the, f the failure probability is 25%, that means the reliability is the complement. Okay? It's 1 minus 25%, so that means it's going to be 75%. Okay, we also know that the reliability is equal to e to the power minus lambda of t. So that means 0.75 is equal to e to the power minus lambda t. And therefore, t, we can solve for t. So that means we can, uh, uh, now to solve for this here for t, you have to take the natural logarithm or the logarithm of both sides, okay? So the, na the natural logarithm of 0.75, you take it, and it's going to be minus 0 0.2876. And you take the natural logarithm of e to the power minus 0 0.0082 multiplied by t. Now, from simple mathematics, you should all know that this expression here, so this expression over here is going to be equal to minus 0 0.0082t multiplied by the natural logarithm of e. Okay, in other words, the exponential part, the the power part, moves, you know, uh, to the front over here, and multiply it by the natural logarithm of e. Now, this here, the natural logarithm of e is going to be 1. And you can solve for t, and then you'll find that t is equal to 35 hours. Okay? From the above example, we can see that if preventive maintenance takes place every 35 hours of operation, then the risk of failure is going to be 25 percent okay there's 25 percent risk if you do the preventive maintenance every 35 hours okay uh, <clears throat> if the preventive maintenance interval is the mean time between failure we saw that is which is 121.5 hours then the risk of failure is 1 minus the reliability at mean time between failure, which is going to be 63.21 percent okay remember the reliability at mean time between failure was what 36.78%, right? So here we have, it's going to be 1 minus the reliability that will give you the, the, the failure, uh, the risk of failure. So, uh, <coughs> maintenance and risk economics. To determine whether a preventive maintenance program is economical or not, uh, we have to study two things, right? We have to study the cost. If there's no preventive maintenance program at all, and if there is a preventive maintenance program, and then compare the two. Okay, so the economy is determined based on the following information. You need to know the, the cost per failure occurrence. So, for example, if, if uh, an equipment fails, for example, every failure will cost on average, let's say, uh, $7,000, then you have to put the, you need that number. The cost per preventive maintenance routine. Every routine is going to cost you some money to, you know, for uh, lubrication, for, uh, you know, uh, replacing uh, brushes or so on um, <laughs> the number of work hours per year of the equipment how many work hours does it does does the equipment uh, work per year based on these three parameters above the pm program can be adjusted for maximum economical benefits let's take this example here assume that a machine that has uh, mtbf of 240 hours is operated th 350 days per year for 12 hours per day the cost of failure occurrence is $3,000. Okay, $3,000 per failure. Uh, a, a PM program would cost $300 per routine. What is the cost of saving uh, of having, uh, um, what is the cost saving of having a PM routine every 200 hours of operation? Okay, the first thing we need to find is the total number of hours the machine stays operational every, uh, every year. In 350 days, that means it only rests for two weeks, okay? And it works 12 hours a day. 
that's going to be a total of 4,200 hours per year. Now, uh, at MTBF of 240 hours, the mean time between fares is 240, so lambda is going to be equal to 0 0.004167, one divided by uh, mean time between failures. At time intervals of uh, 200 hours, we're going to find that the, re the reliability is going to be, R of 200 is going to be e to the power minus lambda t, that's going to be 0.4346, uh, which is 43.46%. 46 that means, at the mean time between failures, uh, the the risk of failure, okay, I'm sorry, at 200 hours, that means at 200 hours of our, every intervals of 200 hours, the risk of failure is 56%. Okay, you have 56.54% risk of failure between every uh, between the, the scheduled PM routines. Okay, so you're gonna have in total. Uh, you're gonna have 21 routines because 4200 divided by 200 hours you're gonna have 21 routines so you're gonna have 21 intervals okay you're gonna have 21 intervals now there's a risk of 56 percent failure between every two uh, uh, between every two uh, routines okay in each interval there's a 56 percent chance of failure okay so the question is how many failures will you have if you have 21 intervals and each interval has a 56% failure uh, uh, chance of failure that means 56% multiplied by 21 will give you the number of uh, failures per year okay so 0.5654 times 21 that's going to be 11.87 so which is basically 12 failures per year okay that's with the preventive maintenance program okay so the total cost is going to be 21 preventive maintenance routines multiplied by $300 per routine plus 12 failures multiplied by $3,000 per failure and that's going to give you $42,300 in total now let's assume there's no preventive maintenance routine at all okay there's no uh, pre routines taking place at all and then the total number of failures will be uh, 4200 uh, hours of operation per year divided by the mean time between failure okay the mean time between failure which is 240 so that's going to give you 17 and a half failures per year on average so that means uh, the total cost if there's no PM program at all is going to be 17.5 times three thousand dollars per failure that's going to be fifty two thousand five hundred dollars per year Therefore, the, the PM program uh, uh, at 200 hours intervals will save at least $10,200 per year. Okay, thank you.